been teaching on the baptism of the Holy Ghost which has led us over into the teaching on the gifts of the Spirit we uh, discovered in the scripture there's about nine gifts of spiritual gifts we understand there's also what is called ministry gifts of the Holy Ghost which are the apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers then according to Romans chapter 12 there's also what we would refer to as as motivational gifts or body gifts and then we have 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where it lists the gifts of the Spirit or spiritual gifts um, and about nine of those. And so picking up the fourth verse, it says, There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. We just taught on that. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. We did ta teach on that as well. And to another, faith by the same Spirit. We are teaching on that right now. Amen. Uh, to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. We've talked about that. And to another, diversities of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. And so we see a list there of nine gifts, uh, and we've divided them up according to uh, how Paul has uh, shared it. There's three categories. We have three gifts that reveal something, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits, correct? Then we have three gifts that do something that's the gift of faith the working of miracles and the gifts of healings and then we have three gifts that say something which is tongues interpretation of tongues and prophecy and so we've covered the three gifts that reveal something and now we're on the three gifts that do something and I began last Sunday teaching about the gift of faith and uh, we'll continue and probably may wrap that up here this morning concerning we, what is the gift of faith well there are three or four different kinds of faith mentioned in the Bible and we need to distinguish them from one another you have the first kind of faith I talked about this saving faith right for the Bible says for by grace you are saved through faith that not of yourselves it is the gift of God and so we know that, that there's that kind of faith that you got born again when you heard the name of Jesus and about him and then we have another kind of faith called the fruit of faith. And that's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Over in Galatians 5, and 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness, and what? What? Faith. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So we have the fruit of faith. And then the third kind of faith is what we would call general faith. Say general general faith what do you think general faith is general faith is faith that faith that we what that we live by every day it's a faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God and as you grow in the word of God then that general faith that you live by will grow and increase in your life and it becomes stronger and stronger as you exercise general faith amen and then the fourth kind of faith that we see in which I'm teaching you about now is called the gift of faith or the gift of, listen, special. Say special. Come on. It's the gift of special faith. And it is a supernatural endowment from God. And in fact, I'll just give you a quick definition of it. That the gift of faith is a supernatural endowment by the Spirit, whereby that which is uttered or desired by man or spoken by God shall eventually come to pass. Typically, it involves situations that normally your ordinary, everyday faith that you live by has not the capacity to do or perform or produce. And so you go from, or you start out in general faith, amen, 
And when you come to the end of the general faith, if you persist on, you can enter into what is called the supernatural special faith. But you got to use what you have. Are you listening? Apply and use what you have. And then, if necessary, by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will, but will for you to move into the supernatural manifestation of the gift of faith. And so we need to distinguish between the gift of faith and the gift of the working of miracles. Both of those are power gifts and, of course, the gift of healing. But we're going to look at the, the little, some contrasts between the gift of faith and the working of miracles and similarities. So again, the gift of faith is distinct from the working of miracles, though both gifts produce miracles. One of them is active and the other one is passive. The working of miracles is active. The gift of faith doesn't work but passively receives. In other words, the difference between the working of miracles and the gift of faith is that one, listen, does and the other one receives. Amen. The gift of faith, again, is a supernatural endowment by the Spirit whereby that which is uttered or desired by man or spoken by God shall eventually come to pass. The human or divine utterance or miracle, assurance, curse or blessing. Hello? Did you know that the gift of faith can produce either one of those? Huh? You didn't know that, huh? Creation or destruction. Do you know sometimes it takes the gift of faith to destroy something that the enemy has raised up? Right? right. right? Yeah. It, the removal of or alteration of something uh, will ultimately come when it has been, listen, spoken by the gift of faith. Amen. The working of miracles is more of an act, whereas the gift of faith is more of a process. The working of miracles would perform a miracle, whereas the gift of faith would receive a miracle. Hallelujah. And guess what? It's available. To the, God has put this in the body of Christ. Amen. So the working of miracle employs faith which actively works a miracle. But the gift of faith employs faith which passively expects a miracle as a sustained or continuous miracle. When the gift of faith is in operation, it may be that nothing is seen at the time. It may carry over a long period of time, and yet it can happen overnight. Whereas the working of miracles is usually an instantaneous, on-the-spot thing. But either way, both of them are a manifestation of miracles. Again, one is active in producing the miracle. The other one is active in receiving the miracle. The gift of faith was used by the patriarchs. I told you, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. They were speaking by the gift of faith over their sons, proclaiming things that, that didn't even happen for decades or even hundreds of years. But it still happened, and it was a, a manifestation of the gift of faith through them. I mentioned that, that you couldn't, God can speak through you concerning blessing and speaking things over your own children. I mentioned to you last week, some of you may feel like you failed in raising your kids. Well, guess what? Are they still alive? It's not over then, is it? You're still a patriarch of the family. And God can speak through you. You can, you can, you can receive from the Lord and speak words of life over your offspring. Amen. No matter how silly they may be from time to time. And how it seems like we got a few chuckles on that one. So we also found out that the gift of faith can work for personal protection. Daniel was operating in the gift of faith in that regard. We found out that the gift of faith is, can also be used for supernatural sustenance and provision. And we saw Elijah being fed by the what? The ravens. Amen. Those ravenous birds, you know. But they brought him bread and meat. And uh, so that was supernatural. The gift of faith is used also for raising the dead. Um, the gift of faith has been uh, is a manifestation of God's power for casting out evil spirits. I know that by personal experience. 
I also know it by personal experience when it comes to praying and interceding on behalf of someone who's dying. And miraculously, they come back to life. And so I've seen that manifest in my ministry. The gift of faith is also used or manifested through ministering the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, I mentioned something about uh, uh, raising the dead. Did you know when it comes to raising the dead, it actually takes three of the power gifts, all three power gifts. You need the gift of faith to receive that person's spirit back into their body. It receives the miracle of the person coming back into their body. You need the gift of the working of miracles to raise the body from the dead. And then you need the gifts of healing to heal the body, particularly if they've been dead for a while. Amen? And for it to be a sustained miracle. And so uh, one of the testimonies I shared in the early service was with Smith Wigglesworth, who had a ministry, and many of you remember him, have read some things about him. He died in 1948, and so I just want you to know he's not one of the original 12 apostles or anything like that. Hello. But, um, but God used him. He was a spirit-filled, tongue-talking, Bible-believing. He never read anything in his whole life except for the Bible. So anyway, under his ministry, approximately 23 people were, different people were raised from the dead. And the first instant was while he was still working as a plumber. He had not been separated under the ministry. If you will, he was a lay minister. And he had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But, uh, he, but, but he wasn't out in active ministry yet. And when he came in from work one afternoon... He learned that a neighbor lady had been sick and had just died. So he began to pray. Evidently, he'd gone over there to where she was. And he began to pray. And here's his testimony in his words. He says, I began to penetrate the heavens with my prayers. With what faith that I did have. What faith is that? General faith. That's the faith we all have. And he says, so I worked what I did have. Amen. And so he says uh, that all the time that I was praying, my wife was shaking me saying, stop praying. She's already dead. She said, it's too late. But I just kept praying. Soon I came to the end of my faith. And when I did... I was conscious of a faith which took hold of me that could not be denied. So he went from his general faith of believing God and entered into what we just read here, the gift of faith. While I was praying in my own faith, it seemed as if God said, no, no. But when, but when this other faith came over me, I looked right up into heaven and said, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? I would, yeah, amen. And so he said, the next thing I knew without intending to do it and without realizing what I was doing, I got a hold of that woman. I pulled her out of the bed. I stood her up against the wall and commanded her to walk in Jesus' name. And she started breathing and started walking and was raised up from the dead. Amen. Come on now. So... Anyway, we can see that this something like this is beyond anybody's ordinary faith. Huh? So in our ordinary faith, we can pull somebody out of bed, as Wigglesworth did. We can stand them up and tell them to walk, but they're probably not going to walk. Amen? Not without the gift of faith and the working of miracles. And so if, and now here's the good point. That if we'll make a step or take the step of faith and use our own faith, our ordinary faith, and I say that in contrast to the gift of special faith, but if we'll take the step of faith, which we have, and if we'll come to the end of that faith, very often the supernatural gift of faith or special faith will take over. And the reason that it hasn't happened with a lot of folks is that they don't first use what they already have. You know, I understand how the gift of faith works. I, you know, I can, under, I can identify 
with Smith Wigglesworth, but not so much raising the dead, but I have experienced this gift of special faith dealing with someone almost dead on more than one occasion. And one of the testimonies I like to share, and I shared it last Sunday in the early service, but I ran out of time in the second service, and I wasn't able to get to it to illustrate the point concerning the gift of faith. But this is why I was, you know, I, I shared with you uh, back in the 80s, Francis and I, the first year that we were married, we ended up managing a, a apartment complex in San Mateo, California. And we attended uh, the, a church down in, 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 in uh, the San Jose area. But then the Lord moved us up to, to hook up with a ministry in San Francisco at the time. But again, I was working in my secular job. But one of the things that I love to do, and I've shared this with you and emphasize it, is praying in the Holy Ghost a lot. Francis, too, same thing. Just pray and meditate on the Word. There's power and anointing in that book that's on your lap. Amen. And as you meditate on that Word, that anointing gets down in your spirit. Hallelujah. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And so that was my state of affairs then, and so it is now. But... One day, I mean, there was this fellow that, worked, that lived in this apartment complex. And guess where he was from originally? Reno. He'd come from Reno. And the reason why he'd come down to the Bay Area there, lower elevation. Because of here in Reno, of course, we're a little higher up. And, I, you know, if you're not used to the thinner air, you know, for some they get a little winded, you know. And... Uh, Anyway, he had full-blown emphysema, was on full oxygen. And, uh, you know, I imagine it had to be horrible for him here because when I saw him, it was, he was just always seemed to be gasping for air himself at, even down there in San Mateo. His name was Chester. Now, his sister lived in the complex, and her name was Esther. You know, and I last, year, last week I called her Ethel, but I got it right. It's Esther, and I can see why the parents named her Esther and named him Chester. Chester and Esther. But I want to tell you something about Esther. Ch Esther, uh, you know, even the name, I mean, although in the Bible, we, we love Esther in the Bible. Do we have any Esthers in the ch church right now at all before I say what I'm going to say? I don't know. When I hear the name Esther, I think about Esther and San Mateo. She was a meanie. You know, she was, because uh, we were managers, and you know, she always wanted to make sure we were doing our job. I did my job. I don't need you to police me. Amen. But she just walked around like she owned the place. Well, she lived there for like 20 years, you know. And if you live in the same apartment for 20 years, you almost, you almost own it in some ways. But anyway, Chester, she was, I'm not Chester, Esther. <laughs> Esther, man, she was built. You know, there's a song called, well, never mind. Amen. But she was. She was, you know, she was looked like a linebacker. Do not get in Esther's way. I mean, I'll tell you. And so uh, always mad, half the mad, kind of grumpy all the time. Well, it turns out that Chester was just, as, just like her. Of course, the sickness didn't help him and made him even more irritable. But I know that he'd come to the base. He was dying. And... Um, one day when I was doing the parking garage, because we had like 90 units and we had underground parking, and he'd come and, they, you know, they strategically had their apartment near the elevator so he didn't have to walk so far. And, and Chester could barely go from the bathroom or the bedroom to the bathroom and he'd just gasp for air. It was so difficult for him to breathe. And so he evidently he must have had come back from a doctor's appointment and so they parked the car near the elevator so he could just get from the car to the elevator, up the elevator, and to the apartment. You know, little, very little walking. And I remember he, he, he got out of the car, and I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And I saw him. And the look that I saw in his eyes was like the look that you would see in the eyes of a person that's drowning. The panic and the fear. And you know, I mean, when you can't breathe, hello, that'll put a little fear in you. And I saw, I just, 
I, I saw his face. I saw his eyes. And when I did, something, now I know what it was, rose up on the inside of me. I, could, I literally experienced what the Bible says that Jesus was moved by. The Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion and healed the multitudes. I'd never experienced the Jesus kind of compassion from a, a tangible standpoint like I did that moment when I look into his face. Oh, oh I just, I, I, you know, I wanted to take his place. It was that, that great, the love and the compassion for him. And so, I, there, you know, a boldness rose up me. And I went up to him and I said, Chester, I'm going to pray for you. And, 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 and there was something in that when I said it. Because something on the inside of me began to stir up. And so I went about my day. I could not get his, the image of his face from me. It, I just... I just so wanted to do something for him. And it stayed with me all day. I couldn't wait to get done with my work because I so wanted to lock myself up in a room and get on my face before God because something in me wanted to plead his case. And so I remember, I told Francis, I said, I gotta pray for at Chester. And uh, so I went and locked myself in the room there. And she was pretty new, very new to these things because she'd only been saved, a f you know, about six or eight months by the time she and I got married. And at this point, we hadn't even been married a year yet. So she's very young in these things. And so I went into that prayer room and I did. I started in my faith, but that faith I, was still birthed out of love and compassion and I, as I began to pray and plead, I, the same thing happened that Smith Wicklesworth experienced. I started in my faith, and his motivation for that woman was love and compassion. I understand that. And so on, in just the love for that man that rose up on the inside of me, I began to plead his case before God. And next thing you know, I did come to the end of my faith. And I entered into a supernatural special faith that, that, that cannot be denied. And that's the thing about the gift of faith. It is a faith that cannot be denied and will not be denied. And like he said, you know, he says, when I initially was praying in my faith, I felt, I just sensed like it was a no, no. But when that other faith came on, it was a yes, yes right. before the Father. Amen. And so I began to pray, and the intensity of the prayer was so great. I had never experienced the intensity and the power of God come out of my spirit. And I sweat. I mean, it just, I, when I got done praying, and I know I'm, I shook heaven and earth in that prayer for Chester. And I came out of the room, and I was soaked, sweat came off of me. I was just real. And it was because it was the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Well, here's what happened. I found out the next day, somebody came and says, did you hear about Chester? Well, you know, when you hear something, what happened? Well, I knew he didn't die. It, let me put it this way. I knew it was impossible for him to have died after that prayer that I had last night for him. Amen. And so I knew when they said, have you heard about Chester? I knew it had to be good. They said, something happened to him last night. And his, his testimony is, 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 is something that came into his room about 2.30 in the morning. And according to Chester's testimony, this light and this presence came into the room and lit up the room. And God came in and he healed his body. And he came up off of that bed and he unhooked his, his, his oxygen. And this energy and this power just touched his body. And the next morning, he, could, he didn't know what to do with himself. He had all this energy, you know. You know, he couldn't even go to the bathroom from the bedroom because he was so, couldn't talk, he couldn't breathe. So I go out next morning and I got two big courtyards. I had to sweep them all the time because leaves and all that kind of stuff. 
And I go out there and my courtyards are all swept. So I go to the other court and that yards are all swept. And they go, have you heard about Chester? What? And they told me what happened. He goes, he got up, man. He swept your courtyards. He's been working all around here. And he walked all the way to downtown San Mateo and back. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> and next thing you know, he comes knocking on my door and in tears in his eyes. He goes, you did this. <laughs> you, did, you did this. I said, well, I told you I'd pray for you. I told you I'd pray for you. He says, it's a miracle. It's a total miracle. Yes, it is a total miracle. But that, that was a gift of faith. I received a miracle that's what faith does. Faith receives the miracle. I receive the miracle for him. Hallelujah. And these things are available to the children of God. Well, was I a prophet? No. Was I a pastor? No. Was I in the fivefold ministry? No. I just a child of God. Loved Jesus. Served in my local church. Like the usher. Counted the offering. Laid hand or received, received the people that were being laid down. You know, I was a catcher. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, just loving Jesus. Well, I hope you were blessed by the message today. I want to close out our program by giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Why do you need to do that? Well, the Bible says, Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says Jesus came to this world to save men's lives. And, you know, the Scripture says that he took all of your sins upon himself, suffered the penalty for all of your sins, past, present, and future, so that you could be forgiven and reconciled to God, meaning you can be restored to God. So I've got great news for you. The Bible says you have been restored to God. All you need to do is now receive it from the Lord. And the scripture says, if you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord with your mouth and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's as simple as that. So I want to lead you in a prayer so that you can do that right now. All you have to do is just bow your head right there. Pray this prayer and mean it with your heart. And if you do, the Lord will enter your heart. The Bible says that he stands at the door and he knocks. And if any man opens the door... That he, Jesus and the Father, will come and, and dwell within them and give them eternal life. So, I challenge you right now and I'm with a question. Are you saved? If you died today, would you make it to heaven? Keep in mind, you can't earn your salvation. It's a free gift. Jesus paid the ultimate price to give it to you. And all you have to do is just pray a very simple prayer and mean it with your heart. And you'll be saved and born again. So right now, pray this prayer out loud to the Lord. Say, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I confess that I am a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. Jesus Christ is Lord and He is the Savior of the world. And I believe with my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. And I ask you to save me now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that and you meant it, I believe you got born again. I'd like to know about it. So please call us, send us an email. Let us know what God has done for you in your life. Thanks again for tuning into our broadcast, and we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. And beside the river. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to